Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. We're starting our fourth season of these interviews, uh, looking at students uh, primarily from the February 2017 bar exams who have been successful. And today, we're kicking off the series with a newly passing Florida bar taker, Nick Waite in Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Nick. How are you? Hey, Jackson. How are you this morning? Well, good. I'm probably not as good as you're feeling this morning, right? Yeah, a little bit more relieved. I'll be happier when I take the MPRE in August. But okay, uh, <laughs> get get that last piece right. The, the hard part's over with, I think. Well, good. Well, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background and what led you to be in a position to uh, sit for the Florida Bar in February? Sure. Um, I'm I'm originally from South Bend, Indiana. I went to law school up in Lansing, Michigan, at uh, the Cooley College of Law, which is now the Western. Uh, Michigan University College of Law at Thomas M. Cooley Law School, which is probably the longest name ever for a law school. Um, I um, came to Nashville my first year of law school on vacation, fell in love with it, decided just off the cuff that that's where I wanted to move to, um, and uh, moved down here, uh, did my internship down here, took the bar exam in Nashville, got licensed um, in 2009. Um, and worked for a, worked for a law a small law firm for a couple of years, and then started my own law practice about five and a half years ago. Um, I think it's almost going on six years actually. Um, and then how I ended up and how I ended up sitting for the Florida bar exam. Um, my uh, my mentor who who has became one of my one of my very close friends. Um, he had moved to he had moved to Santa Rosa Beach, Panama City area about three or four years ago, and um, we, uh, you know, my fiance and I have been vacationing down there a couple times a year since he's been down there to visit him and his family, and we just kind of fell in love with it, and you know, um, I felt like it was a good opportunity for us to kind of you know maybe reconnect and start doing business together again. So I kind of took the started began taking the first steps to make my way down there and kind of be there permanently. Yeah. So. You know, I, I don't know if you know this or not, Nick, but uh, we lived in watercolor for many years. And oh, Seaside, it's beautiful. Uh, which is Santa Rosa Beach. You're, you're using the formal uh, postal right. designation, but Seaside well, watercolor, if you're familiar with that area. Uh, I love it. Most beautiful beaches <laughs> probably in the U.S., I think. Uh, yeah. So it's a great area. And uh, interestingly enough, we've had a lot of people come out of that area uh, who've taken the Florida bar with us over the years. So uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of an alumni community that you're going to be uh, going into there. Um, what kind of law do you practice in Nashville? I'm mainly doing personal injury at this point. Um, I when I first started, obviously, when I first started my practice, obviously, I was taking everything under the sun to make sure the lights stayed on. But um, now I've kind of kind of figured out that doing doing the personal injury route kind of keeps me out of the courtroom a lot, which I enjoy. You know, okay. as you can see, I'm dressed in a shirt and a hat today. I mean, this is what you're I wear. Dressed, in the yeah, you're dressed like a bar review teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty much dressed like this about 80% of the week, so nice, <laughs> I enjoy nice. that. There's a lot of people envying you right now. Well, so, okay, so you've got a, a, a your own practice. You're in practice. You decide you want to take the Florida bar. When did you decide to start studying for the February exam? I started studying for the February exam uh, right about uh, probably a probably – Right around, right around a week before Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, so okay. about about November, middle about of November. Eight, right? Middle of November. Okay. So, and how many hours a week were you studying for the bar? Uh, I mean, I would say, I would say I was probably putting in close to 25, 30 hours a week. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how you managed the challenges of studying for the bar and running your practice. And do you, um, and, and you mentioned your wife, so you've got a family. Um, how do you, how do you manage all that? Well, uh, it's fortunate enough for me. I had, um, you know, I, we're, we're getting married in September. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry. Year. Yeah. Uh, so fortunate enough for me, it was a little bit easier because I don't have kids yet. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was, I, I was just fortunate enough to where I could basically, um, you know, I had a I had a pretty good January, so I was I was able to kind of like focus for two months and just kind of put everything on the back burner, and I kind of planned out my schedule that way. 
um, you know, with doing the personal injury kind of work and being able to stay out of the courtroom, it afforded me the opportunity to kind of plan it out accordingly and make sure that I didn't have anything like no real court appearances or anything like that. And, um, you know, I basically was just able to, you know, I started looking at it. I think I started looking at my schedule probably in October uh, and just kind of started planning it. Like I said, just planning around it and making sure I had the, the two or three months that I thought I needed that was free and clear yeah. kind of thing with, with right, so minimal let, disturbances. Yeah. So let's break it down a little bit. Uh, you're looking at a week coming up, right? Uh, did you sit down on your calendar and say, I'm going to study during these times of the day? Or did you say certain days you were going to study? Or did you just kind of take it as it came every day? Well, what I did is um, uh, I basically would um, I were also work I also work part time twice a week for another attorney here in town that kind of just he he just I'm at his office twice a week. Um, so basically what I would do, like I usually work there on Mondays and Wednesdays. So what I would do is I'd go in there and work from, you know, 9 a.m. to 4 30 or 5 and then swing by my office, which is right down the street from his office and get two or three hours in probably watch it, try to watch at least one video uh of one of the subjects and then uh the next day kind of just put a full day in but i was going you know i i mean i pretty much was doing saturday sundays i mean i was going i was going full bore for okay. at least a couple months two and a half months i mean i was just going you know Okay. The last thing I wanted to do was have to come back and do it again. So. Okay. All right. So we, we offer the study guide, the syllabus. Were you following that syllabus? Yeah. Followed it to the T. Yep. It's, I mean, that's what I used. I mean, I just knew, I, you know, I think you had said for our for our purposes, we were supposed to be at the ethics course by, I think, February the I think the 15th or yeah. 15th, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just made sure I stayed on point with that and was there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really just stuck to the, I just stuck to it as good as I could. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of just ran me through the whole course. Yeah. So if, for those people who are sort of trying to put this in perspective, you start right before Thanksgiving yep. and by, you know, mid February, so 10 days, two weeks before the exam, you basically finished this, the study guide and you do that while you're working running your practice, working for another attorney, uh, right. trying to keep your fiance happy so that like there will be a wedding, I assume. Uh, <laughs> she made my life easy, God bless her. <laughs> yeah, how did she do that? I mean, how did what did she do to help? That's always interesting to me. I mean, she just kind of took, she took, I mean, she basically just kind of took all the load off of me. I mean, you know, she knew I was in, you know, she just basically knew I needed to, what I needed to do and what it involved. And she was just kind of there for me, whatever I needed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'd come home and, you know, dinner would be ready. She would just ask me, you know, when are you getting home? So I know when dinner's ready and like just basically took, you know, basically took the burden of everything else or anything else with kind of goes with the household or anything like that. Just took care of it um, and just allowed me to totally focus 100 percent on on doing this and doing what we needed to do. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, she, so she's, she's she bought into this idea of living in Florida. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, absolutely. She, okay. She's ready to move to the beach. Yeah, I, she was. <laughs> I'm married to somebody like that. Raised. Yeah, I get that. I, I totally she was get born that. Born and raised in Nashville, so okay. So yeah. she's ready. She's she's been to the Bluebird. Okay, so um, the so you're you're working, you're studying. Now you're in our basic mentor course, which means that you're really kind of, you know, using the materials and all the resources, but I'm not reviewing your work with you. And, right. I, and sometimes I get questions from people and say, well, you know, can you pass with the basic mentoring? Um, the answer is yes, you can see, you know, <laughs> you know, exhibit one, Nick, wait. Yeah. Um, but what, what were the, the unique challenges you would say that you faced uh, trying to study. It's not your first bar, but you've right. got the work and we've kind of talked about that. Were there other challenges that, that existed for you in trying to get through the studies? Um, I think uh, probably just, I, there was, there was a point where I kind of, there was a point where I guess I kind of started hitting a wall, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, especially with like multiple choice questions and yeah. things like that. And I guess, if, I guess if, you know, future people that take the course are going to, are, are going to 
uh, watch this. And, and, and as you know, you, you echo it throughout the review course that basically like, you know, if you start blowing up on the multiple choice, you know, a couple of weeks before the exam, don't freak out because I did. I mean, I was coming home just freaked out. And I guess like basically just basically just, you know, put it off to uh, just said, you know, I mean, I think I'm just starting to hit a wall and I need to back off for a minute. And I'd go back and I, and I actually wouldn't even look at the material. I wouldn't even look at that specific subject for about a week. Mm-hmm. And I just go back and all of a sudden it'd be fine, you know, getting 65, 70 percent right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it I think if that was my I think if there was a challenge because I, I wouldn't say there was a lot. Um, I think that you know you just stick to the syllabus and go from there. But if there was a challenge, I wouldn't say it was that. It, it just the whole getting burned out aspect of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do think you I do think if you get to that point, you just I mean, I just backed off for a little bit and and I went back and calmed down. You know, a few days later and everything was fine. So yeah, it can make a big difference. Can it? I mean, just having a little perspective. Um, so you did the reading, you went through the lectures, you did the question practice. Uh, you're pretty diligent about doing all of that. Um, so now we're getting ready for the exam. You go to Tampa, you've been through a bar exam before, but what was it like in Tampa? What was that experience like? (laughs) It was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Uh, Just let me just stop. Okay, folks, I, I keep telling you, it is, and no one believes me, and then they go, and then they say what you just said. Oh, my God, yeah. I can't believe it. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Describe, describe I, it in your words. <laughs> I mean, well, I took it in February, and as you know, typically, there's a lot less people that take it in February versus July. Yes. And just talking to some people, you know, I think we had, I think we had officially, like, 16, like, 1,624 officially, I think. Okay. So, um, you know, um, so, but yeah, I mean, getting there, I think the exam started at nine 30 in the morning. We had to get there at seven 30 each morning, mm-hmm. just like going through metal detectors. And, <laughs> and they said, well, you know, there's like 5,000 in July. I'm like, I can't imagine. It's you a know? zoo. It's a and zoo. it just kind of, yeah. you know, and it just kind of reminded me of going back to law school where you're walking into it and it's a exam day and everybody's just lined up against the wall and just flipping <laughs> through. And it's just like, oh, man, it's like you just you're not doing yourselves any good. You're just making yourself freak out, <laughs> like just relax yeah. and go do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, here's one of the interesting things. I mean, the I don't know if you've seen the pass rates. Uh, the first time pass rate, uh, BART official state rate was 57 percent, which is the lowest ever for a winter exam in Florida. The overall pass rate is so low that they haven't even published it. It's probably oh. going to be in the low 30s, maybe even less. So it's February. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know, pat yourself because no, you know, no. yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> well, thanks, sir. <laughs> well, so I appreciate that. Um, all right, so you get into the exam, first day of the exam, uh, the essays in the morning, and you typed your essays, right? Yep. Okay. I did. And, um, and then uh, the break, uh, Florida multiple choice in the afternoon. And then the second day, we've got multi-state. And there was a lot of drama around the multi-state this year uh, because there were fewer questions that were going to count, and we have civil procedure that's been added. Um, was there a lot of talk, a lot of buzz at the exam about all of those things? I think that, um, the people I talked to really, I guess, I guess really weren't too aware of it. Um, huh. you know, I, I think at the, I had talked to a couple people, I think that they were basically the thought was, is that a bunch of mortgage questions weren't going to count. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know if they were, yeah, I don't, know. Mortgages. I don't know what it is about mortgages that gets people so wrapped up anyway. I yeah. think I saw them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so how did you feel coming out of the exam after those two days? Uh, I felt I felt fairly confident. Uh, I, I felt like I definitely gave myself a, a really good chance. Um, the uh, fortunate enough for me, my, my biggest concern was the essay portion, mm-hmm. just because you know when I took Tennessee's exam, Tennessee is not, there's not a whole lot of difference between Tennessee and, and the common law, what we're studying for the multi-state, but for Florida, man, there was just, 
uh, there's so many differences. Of course, you know, the Yankee go home subject, the Florida con law. So that um, I, I, I was fortunate enough to basically say, I'm like, all right, hopefully there's a Florida con law question. Hopefully there's not a secure transactions question. And, you know, I basically was able to, I was able to kind of focus on the right subjects based upon your review. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just turned out, it turned out good because I mean, as you know, you're not going to know every subject like the back of your hand. I mean, you know, I knew I needed to little for the con law. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> and was going to be not very thrilled if that was not one of the questions. because <laughs> I freaked out about that for about two weeks. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. <clears throat> welcome. Welcome to Florida. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the bar exam is over. You've now got about a six week waiting period. Um, any, I mean, did you just sort of get on with your life to come back, get back into practice and, and forget about it? Or was it sort of looming you over know, you, you know, like a shadow or what sure. was that? Um, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was unlike the first time that I had to take a bar exam because at least, you know, I had a, pra you know, I had my license right. to practice right. in the state and I could go on and keep working. So I think there was a lot less, it was a lot less stressful for me this time around. Um, it definitely would have, it definitely is nowhere near as much as someone that's first time trying to get licensed for the first time. It's definitely no, I was definitely nowhere near that stressed. Yeah. Um, I think it was just kind of, I, I think I just kind of knew that I gave myself a good chance and that, and I thought it went well enough. And it, it, you know, I mean, obviously on Monday scrolling down the page, there was a little nerves. Um, you know, I didn't think they were coming out till two o'clock. I was pulling out of my driveway at eight thirty Monday morning and, my partner immediately called me and said, Hey, they're up. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'll run back in the house. I'll call you right back. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I was overly stressed out, yeah. uh, just kind of freaking out about it. Right. And, and when you saw the results, what's that feel like? Ah, uh, it was awesome. Uh, it was fortunate enough. It happened when it happened because my fiance was still home. So her and I got to see it at the same time. So it was very special to share that moment with her because, you know, she kind of, was my rock throughout the entire process. So I was just, yeah, a uh, huge feeling of relief. And then uh, immediately the thought was now I can't take the NPRE till August. Yeah. So <laughs> I got to wait till August to get licensed, unfortunately. Okay. But, yeah, it'll happen. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty pro forma. Yeah. So, well, why did you choose Celebration Bar Review? I actually, um, I was at a, uh, one of my best friend's weddings uh, last September in Colorado and ran into a really good friend of his that's a licensed attorney in St. Petersburg, mm -hmm. Florida. Him and his wife are both licensed. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm taking the February bar. And he, he said, dude, he goes, D celebration. That's all you need to know. <laughs> He's like, take the celebration bar review course. Don't take, you know, don't take Barbary. Just Take celebration. That's all you need. So I went on his advice and took it and kind of saw that it was, you know, the main thing for me was is that it was just kind of, you know, like you say, I mean, everybody else has, you know, everybody that takes your course probably has something else going on, like running their own practice or being a lawyer in another state. So I think it's really important to be able to do it at your leisure. And it just that worked best for me. And that's what I've, I definitely liked about it was just being able to go at your own pace and, you know, you get done when you need to get done, but you're also able to go at your own pace, which is which is definitely ideal for me in that situation. That's great. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm I appreciate that somebody would uh, steer you in our direction. Yeah. What? Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll wrap up here in a minute. But but sure. what advice would you have, Nick, for someone who's in a similar position to you? They've got a a law practice or they're working and they're thinking about taking uh, the bar exam. What would you say to them uh, in terms of what they might want to consider or think about doing at this point? Well, obviously, I mean, I, I, like I said, I can't, I can't speak, I can't speak highly enough about the celebration bar review course. I mean, I think that, I think that, I mean, if you are going to do a bar review course that, 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 that this is the one to take, um, you know, I, I mean, it, it, obviously it can be done. I mean, you may have a bunch of other stuff going on in your, in your life and things like that, but I mean, obviously it can be done. And, and I think that, you know, and I think that if, if somebody really wants to do it and they're, and they're ready to commit and put the full time in that needs to be put in, I think they're, you know, I think, I, I don't think they're going to have a problem um, doing it. Um, it's, it's, it was definitely, it was definitely, 
it, it took me back to studying for Tennessee. It was not easy at all. Uh, I'm not going to say it wasn't stressful. <laughs> it was very stressful. Um, but, you know, just the grass is greener on the other side, as they say. Yeah. You know. Well, the grass is much greener and the water is much bluer yeah. <laughs> at Seaside. Um, listen, Nick, I'm I'm so pleased for you and, and just Thank you so uh, much. thankful that you would share your story and uh, your, your experience with our audience. I know that uh, it will inspire a lot of people and it will encourage a lot of people who are feeling that like, ah, I got to get this right. done. Uh, but I think it's really remarkable. And as I say, given the pass rates for you to come in, with all of the other things going on in your life and take this exam and pass on the first try is really a remarkable uh, accomplishment. I mean, it's no small matter uh, these days to, to pass the bar ever, but on the first try, it's a big deal. And so we, we really wanted to publicly uh, congratulate you and uh, uh, thank you and, and welcome you into our alum family um, and uh, just wish you the very best. I hope that we'll be able to stay in touch. And, uh, you know, next time uh, we're up in uh, Seaside, uh, when you're uh, there, we'll have to, to get together and, uh, and catch up a bit. So. Absolutely, Jackson. Well, I thank you so much and, and thank you for all your help. And like I said, couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again in the next episode. Bye for now.